Okay, now the very first set of tree leaves that we are going to be looking at today for identification is sassafras. Now sassafras trees have three different types of leaves. This is one of the types of leaves that you're going to find, and this is what's called the mitten-shaped leaf of sassafras. This is very commonly seen on a lot of sassafras trees, along with the two other types of leaves that are on sassafras. Whenever we look at this leaf, we can notice this one large lobe and then this one small lobe over here, making it resemble a mitten in shape. Therefore, it's called the mitten-shaped leaf. So let's take a look at some of the other types of leaves that you can find on sassafras. Here are the two other types of leaves that you're going to commonly find on sassafras trees. Now, it's important to keep in mind that not every sassafras tree is going to have all three types of leaves, so it's important to know what all three of them look like. On the left here, we can see this three-lobed version, and then on this side, we can see a simple oval-shaped or ovate-shaped leaf. This is the simple version on the right and the more complex version on the left. So these are the three different types of leaves that we're going to find on sassafras. Let's take a look at this lobed one more in depth. Whenever we're looking at the leaves of sassafras, whether it's the lobed versions or the simple ovate version of the leaf, we're going to notice that the margins of the leaves are smooth. There are no teeth or serrations. And other than that, the leaves are almost rather featureless besides the stereotypical lobes. However, if the leaves are fresh, you can rub them between your fingers and then smell that stereotypical sassafras flavor or smell that you get from sassafras. As we can see here on the margins of this leaf, it is completely smooth. There are no other features besides the lobes. And this is the same for the other two types of sassafras leaves that we just looked at. Here are the margins of the mitten-shaped leaf, so we can see that it is smooth as well. Here we go. And then here we can see the margins of the ovate-shaped leaf with, again, nothing on the margins of it. They are completely smooth. Now right here we can see a close-up of the bark of the sassafras tree. Right here as we look at this bark, we can notice that it's gray and it's somewhat smooth in appearance and there are these long striations running vertically all the way down the outside of the bark. Now as we go further up the tree on a sassafras, we're going to notice that the bark will generally become a little bit browner and those striations seem to be a little more rough and the bark becomes a little bit rougher in texture as well. So that's something to keep in mind whenever you're looking at the bark of a sassafras tree. Now on your young sassafras saplings, you're going to notice this very light green bark looks more like the color of asparagus instead of being brown or silver and it doesn't have any of those striations forming in it yet. Now if we take our fingernail and then scrape off some of this green bark and then smell it, we're going to notice that distinct sassafras smell. Okay, now the next species of tree that we're going to be covering is oaks. There are a lot of varieties of oaks, and there are over 24 to my knowledge in my state of Indiana alone. So we're definitely not going to be covering all species of oaks and the different variations of the leaves. However, we are going to cover two of the more basic varieties that you're probably going to be running across. And that is a black oak, which we can see the leaf of the black oak on the right, and then the white oak, which we can see its leaf here on the left. Right away, we can notice two very distinct differences between these leaves. On the right-hand side for the black oak leaf, we notice it has a lot of lobes that are very pointy, and they get to very, very fine points towards the very tip of the leaf, versus on the white oak, we notice its lobes are very rounded and blunt. Instead of being sharp and pointy, we can also notice that the size difference between these two is overall fairly close. So let's talk for a second about the black oak leaf. There is another species of oak known as red oak, and I do not have any of its leaves in front of me right now, but they look very similar to a black oak leaf in that they are pointed at all these lobes at the very end. Let's take a look at the tip of these lobes and see how sharp they can get. We can see this very, very fine point right here. Red oak leaves will generally have a much longer point at the end of each one of the lobes versus black oak leaves will generally have a shorter point at the tip of the lobe. So that's something to keep in mind. If we look at the sides or the margins of the leaf on white oak or black oak, or even red oak, we're going to notice that there are no teeth or serrations along the margins of these leaves. 
So that's something to pay attention to whenever you see oak leaves on the forest floor during fall and spring and all throughout the year. You can look at the leaf litter on the ground to help you identify what species of oak you have in the area. Now right here we're up close and personal with that really big black oak. What we can notice on the bark is this brownish grayish appearance on the outer cambium layer, but we can also notice these very long rectangular sections, these little bitty long rectangular sections that are deeply incised into the tree. They're deeply grooved running lateral or running uh, perpendicular to the ground along the branch of the, or the trunk of the tree. And this is a good way to tell by the bark and the leaves and the size that we have a black oak. Obviously, oaks drop acorns, and acorns are an extremely important food source, not only for wild animals, but also for humans as well. I've actually done a few videos on how to collect and process acorns for food, so if you're interested, feel free to check those out. Now, the next species of tree that we are going to be talking about is the tulip poplar. Ironically, its name is more of a misnomer, and it's horribly incorrect because the tree is not technically a poplar species, it's actually a magnolia species. But nevertheless, it is still called tulip poplar, or yellow poplar, depending on where you live and the typical names that people associate with it. This is a very distinct looking leaf, as we can tell by these four distinct lobes that it has, especially these two on the back sides, on the back, on the sides here that really stick out. This is a very popular tree to look for for morel mushrooms and oyster mushrooms as they both typically love this tree species. If we look on the margins of the leaf of tulip poplar, we're going to notice that it is smooth on the margins, just like the rest of the tree species that we've looked at so far. Tulip poplar is a very beautiful tree. It's also a very tall growing tree. The leaves of tulip poplar can range from various sizes from just a few inches like this one here, which is about the size of my hand. And I've even seen some that are two or three times this size. So size isn't an indicator. However, because of the size and shape of the leaves, they can be actually pretty decent to wipe with if you don't have toilet paper. Now right here we can see the bark of that tulip poplar tree that we were just looking at. One thing that we're going to notice compared to the other trees that we looked at, the sassafras and the sycamore, is the difference in the bark and the depth of these striations running vertically down the bark. There's a slight bit of a crisscross pattern to this bark, but mainly you're going to notice just long, very deep, deeply incised striations running down the bark. We're also going to notice instead of being a very dark brown, it's got a light brown with a little bit of a silver touch to it. Now, as a tree gets older, this bark will fall off, and whenever you see the bark of a tulip poplar peeling off, you're normally going to be seeing little white strands of mycelium running through the inside of the bark in between the wood and the inner cambium layer of the bark. And this is where your wood sporing mushrooms like your oysters and stuff usually will embed themselves in the bark of this tree. Another tree species that we're going to be discussing today is the sycamore. This is a very common leaf that's found all over the woods in the fall and spring and the leaves are very sturdy and they can persist throughout winter degradation. The sycamore tree has its very own unique bark and if we look at the leaves, its leaves are rather unique as well. We can see these several lobes coming off of the side of the leaf. Now if we look closely at the margins of the sycamore leaf, we're going to notice that there are fine teeth and serrations all along the margins. And you're gonna find these running all the way up the lobes all the way around the sides of this leaf. So this can be a really good way to identify sycamore leaves is to look for those distinct lobes and then those margins with all of those teeth. Another unique feature about sycamore leaves is on the back, the main vein that goes through the leaf is very, very hairy. See if I can get this on camera. There we go, you guys may be able to see those, you should be able to see those little hairs and fuzz that runs all along the main veins through the back of the sycamore leaf. Sycamore leaves can get quite big, as we can see by the size of this one here, it is a little larger than my hand. Sycamore leaves also make a really, really good piece of toilet paper if you do not have any available out in the woods because of their size. Now ironically, some people confuse sycamore leaves that we can see right here with maple leaves. 
And I can see how they can do that because they do typically have five to seven lobes, but there is a big difference. So let's get a maple leaf for comparison. Very obvious thing that we can notice at first is the size difference between the two. Now if we look very closely at the lobes of the maple leaf, we can see how much more deeply incised the lobes are on the maple leaf compared to these broader divisions that we see on the leaf of the sycamore. So these two can be confused because they do have a similar number of lobes as we can see, but the size difference and the incision, the deepness of incision on the lobes is a big determining factor. Now the outer bark of sycamore will generally fall off as the tree grows in age, and you usually see that higher up you go on the tree, you're going to notice this white silvery sort of appearance that we can see right here on this limb that we're looking at. Now if we look right here, we can see the sycamore tree is sprouting out extra little saplings or suckers coming out of it. This is another unique feature of the sycamore is that it can keep sprouting little bits of trees coming out of it and limbs coming out of the base. If we look at this, we're going to notice its bark is very, very different. Now as we look at the bark right here, we can notice that it's very, very smooth on this young sapling coming out of this tree versus the bark at the base of the tree, which is very, very rough. So that's something to keep in mind is there are three different types of bark that you can find on a sycamore tree. 